Cheyenne. Look at that sentry, sir. Half asleep. He'd be court-martialed if he was in the cavalry. Shouldn't be any trouble, General. Couldn't be more than half a dozen of them. It's just a hunting party that sneaked off the reservation. Suppose we ought to forget we seen them. I'd like to, Joe, but my orders are to drive them back to the reservation. Sergeant, put the men out so they're surrounding the camp. And pass the word there'll be no shooting. Sergeant, I mean no shooting. First man who fires a shot will answer to me. My orders are to drive them back to the reservation and to kill them. It's your fault, Colonel. Pretty hard to convince an Indian that you're not trying to kill him. Especially when he won't give you a chance to talk. General, over here. This here's an Indian called Black Eagle. He's the younger brother of Chief Tall Knife. Get me some water. Something to pack this wound. I'm gonna stop the bleeding. Never mind, Sergeant. He's dead. One of them braves got away. He gets back to the camp and tells Tall Knife that one of your men killed his brother. Tall Knife's gonna start the biggest dad blame Indian war you ever did see. he had been the youngest general in the Civil War. Within five years, he had been reduced in rank and sent west to be forgotten. But he was not the kind of man to let the world forget. His name, George Armstrong Custer. Dismiss the rest of the men. Yes, sir. All right, you heard him. You all just volunteered for burial detail. Dismount and lead off. Oh, 
Thank you, Melinda. <laughs> now, being stuck with a sister around here isn't nearly half as bad as I expected it to be. I'm not so sure that I consider that a compliment. Huh? <laughs> well, it was meant to be. As a matter of fact, I find myself envying your husband. You got a fine family. Three nice boys and a wife who can cook the way you can. Thank you. Tell the truth, it's been a real pleasure having you out here for a visit, even during these troubled times. If only you hadn't brought that blasted female dragon with you. Temper, temper, Alfred. Besides, you're the one who insisted that I mustn't travel alone. Yes, but why bring that female horse Greeley with you? You know what she had the nerve to say to me at breakfast this morning? No. This is the red man's land, implying that we didn't have any right to be here at all. Alfred. You are being so unkind to Anna. Besides, you didn't know her during the war. She was so young, so beautiful, and so much in love. But uh, Anna called Stone Peverly? Yes, a and John Peverly. He was a young firebrand, always backing the downtrodden, fighting for social reform. He's the one that founded the magazine Bold Venture as part of that fight. And then when he was killed during the war, Anna was determined to carry on for him. Uh, well, just the same, the blasted female goes too far. Now, the next thing you know, she'll be advocating smoking and wearing men's pants, as well as voting. And what would be so wrong with that? Well, I'll tell you what would be so wrong with that. The thing that... Come in! Okay. Pointing in from patrol, sir. At ease, Colonel. I heard about Tall Knife's brother. Couldn't have happened at a worse time. I took every possible precaution, sir, but... I know that. It wasn't your fault. You were merely carrying out orders. But it was my responsibility, sir. There was absolutely no point in bothering that hunting party at all, sir. There's no sense to this policy of driving the Indians here and driving them there. We don't make policy, Colonel. We merely carry it out. And the people who make the policy should be out here to see what's going on. Some fool in Washington sits behind a desk and issues a senseless order, not realizing how many men are going to die trying to carry it out. Well, it is an order, Colonel. It is an order. That's right, sir. It's an order. But if I hadn't followed orders last night, seven men would be alive today. Seven. And a harmless hunting party of Cheyenne would have eventually wandered back to their reservation. Out here on the frontier, an officer has the right to question idiotic orders. All right, now that's enough. Your flair for individual effort has already cost you your general star and your regiment. I'm going to overlook your statement because I can see that you're upset. But when you're given an order, you will follow out that order. Our charges are going to be preferred against you. You know that, don't you? Yes, sir. General Terry, is it true that there was an unprovoked attack against a Cheyenne hunting party by soldiers of your command? We'll continue this discussion later, Colonel. Exactly the attitude I expected you to take, General Terry. I'm out of Cold Stone Peverly, Colonel Custer, General Terry's house guest. You were on patrol when we arrived, but I have been looking forward to meeting you. My, uh, uh, privilege to meet you, Miss Peverly. It is Miss Peverly. It's Mrs. Peverly, Colonel Custer. My husband was killed during the Civil War. You have my sympathy, ma'am. I didn't expect you to be so socially conventional, Colonel Custer. To express banalities you have no reason to mean. Mrs. Peverly is a social reformer and a militant suffragette. Militant. And thoroughly disapproved of by General Terry. You see, I'm the publisher and editor of Bold Venture. Perhaps you've heard of the magazine. I'm free to have, Mrs. Peverly. You've published a number of articles about me. None of them flattering. That is quite correct. But then again, you don't approve of most of the actions of Congress or the President either. An office I understand you hold some ambition for. If so, can I count on your vote, Mrs. Peverly? Aren't you being a little bit premature, Colonel? man has to be over 35 years of age to hold the presidency in this country. Uh, now, Mrs. Peverly, if you'll excuse us, uh, this is a military matter. And to be surrounded by the customary secrecy and misinformation usually provided by the Department of War. 
May I remind you, Mrs. Beverly, that you are a guest in my house? That does not change the fact that my duty requires me to investigate all matters concerning the public welfare. Despite your convictions of equality between the sexes, you still take advantage of being a woman, don't you, Mrs. Beverly? Wearing female. Just the same, I think you ought to know that she's got enough influence to affect your entire military career. In what way? In any way she pleases. In spite of the fact that she continually criticizes government policy in her magazine, she's still President Grant's favorite niece. Grant's niece? Yeah. President Grant and his brother Orville aren't exactly my most ardent admirers. Well, that's precisely why I warned you. Uh, come in! It's Tall Knife, sir. What about Tall Knife? Well, he's come here, sir. He says he's come for the body of his brother. And he's wanting to talk to Colonel Custer. I'd better talk to him. You stay here, Colonel. I'm sorry, sir. But I think Tall Knife has a right to see me. I owe it to the man. You owe him nothing. I was responsible for his brother's death. I'd like to explain how it happened. All right. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. I grieve with you for the death of your brother. I didn't order it. It was mistaken in the darkness before I... Black time. Eagle was little more than a boy. He was like a son to me. Did he attack any of your men? No. My orders were to move the Cheyenne... Did back... he commit any crimes against the laws of the white man? There were no crimes committed, Tall Knife. Black Eagle and his hunting party wandered off the reservation. For this... For this he was killed. No, not for that. It was dark. My men moved in to surprise your people so there'd be no shooting. One of my men stumbled. Without warning, a fight broke out. Then one of your men killed my brother. For no reason. For no reason. fight with you. We've been friends too long. Yellow hair is a coward. Men should fight with honor and for honor. Black Eagle's dead. It was a mistake and I'm sorry for it. Eddie's! Yellow hair refuses to fight as a warrior fights. But this will not end what is between us. We shall hunt one more dime, Yellow Hair. Death Hunt of the Cheyenne. attacked a small Cheyenne hunting party and murdered all but one of them. Isn't that true? From your point of view, it is. What other point is there? For more than a hundred years, the Plains tribes have fought the growth of this country. Now they stand in the direct path of uniting the two halves of our nation. 
In any war, mistakes are made. War? Our trampling upon the rights of the Indian tribes by our might? I am very familiar with your career here on the frontier, as well as with the infamous record of the 7th Cavalry Regiment. Cite your record, Mrs. Peverly. Gladly, Colonel Custer. The massacre of the Cheyenne at the Washita River. You attacked before dawn two years ago, and that tribe of the Cheyenne Nation was almost destroyed by your ruthless slaughter. The punitive raid against Black Kettle and his Cheyenne was ordered by General Philip H. Sheridan. This is a copy of his official report. Between the months of August and November, 1868, the settlers of Kansas and Colorado sustained the following losses. Murdered, 117. Wounded, 16. Scalped and mutilated, 32. Women outraged, 14. Women captured and never seen again, 4. Horses and mules stolen, 619. Stock cattle stolen, 958. It is these acts of incredible rapine and murder that forced the attack on Black Kettle and his Cheyenne. The newspapers said that there were only women and children at the Cheyenne village, and yet you attacked. Seventh Cavalry sustained 37 losses. I counted 103 dead Cheyenne braves. I killed Black Kettle myself. You are as convincing as I have been told you are, Colonel Custer. But how do you justify your attack on Tall Knife's brother and his hunting party? For your information, Mrs. Peverly, I don't. Do you intend to drop the matter and let it be forgotten as the incident on the Washita was forgotten? I intend to take whatever action I consider necessary. And so do I. I intend to publicize what has happened, and I promise you that pressure will be brought upon the Secretary of War to institute a formal investigation. Without the troop. I've got to convince him that I spoke the truth about his brother. You know what he meant by that invitation to a death hunt, don't you? I know. You're sure picking a hard way for you and me to commit suicide. Why, he'll have our scalps a dangling from a teepee pole for dark. You see that my horse is saddled and ready. You don't have to come along, California. I can find Tall Knife's village alone. Well, I've always said that the Cheyenne was a whole lot meaner than the Sioux are. I reckon now's just as good a time as any to put her to the test. In the name of scientific research, them fellers at that new Smithsonian institution is sure going to be awful thankful to you and me. I'll go get the fuel and the horse. I should have decided Tall Knife's lodges by now. The last time I was up this way, he's camped off yonder in that valley. Why would Tall Knife move his people away from good water and his horses from good grazing? Well, the only reason I can think of is to hide these women and children so him and his braves can hit the war trail. We've got to find him. Sure does beat all how fast a whole Cheyenne village can disappear in the thin air. Look. There's cabin over yonder. Church people didn't even own a gun. Didn't believe in them.
Let's look. I'll be doggone. Would you take a look at that, General? That many Braves ain't for our benefit. He's tall knife, and he's after a bigger game than us. He's going to attack Ford Hayes. That's right. They're killing them just running over the crops, man. It's something fierce. They ain't a half a mile behind us, and they're moving down. Hey, move that circle. Get on those walls. Bugler, sound the alarm. What's going on? That's that. We're being attacked, sir. Tall night. Hold your fire till they're within 100 yards. As you were. They won't attack yet. Well, you bet they won't put it off for long, General. You're right, California. Sergeant, give me a fresh horse. Yes, sir. You stay right there, Sergeant. You remain inside this fort, Colonel. This has to be settled with Tall Knife now, sir. He'd like nothing better than to suck you into a trap. I can take care of myself, General Terry. That's a risk that I refuse to take. You'll countermand your order to the Sergeant immediately. Yes, sir. I hate to say it, but General Terry's right, you know. California, when are you going to learn to keep that big mouth of yours shut? I got to admit, Sergeant, I'm just about as good at sticking my foot in my big mouth as the next man. Taking this fort could be a job. But there just might be enough of them to do it, Captain. I... I'm thinking the same thing myself, James B. Open the gate. I'll do the talking, Custer. Why are you here, Tall Knife? You've signed a treaty that there are to be no more wars between us. I want yellow hair. You talk like a fool. What about our treaties? Did the treaty stop yellow hair from killing my warriors? You were told that was a mistake. Give me yellow hair, or I leave this place in ashes. Sunrise, we fight. Colonel, you'll see to it that the men are prepared to defend this fort at dawn. But you have no choice in the matter. General Terry, I resent being sent packing this way. I'm a representative of the American president. You're my duty also a woman, and it's my duty to see that you're safely conveyed out of danger. You don't seem to realize, Mrs. Peverly, that this fort is under the threat of an immediate attack by an overwhelming force of Cheyenne warriors. And you don't seem to realize... The things are in the Surrey, ma'am. Now, if you'll get aboard, please. Thank you, Colonel Custer. I'm only sorry the time was so short. I was counting on having you to dinner. I'm looking forward to another time very soon. Things will quiet down. They always do. I hope so. Do be careful. I will, thank you. Come on, Melinda. And you be careful too, Alfred. Don't 
You'll always be letting yourself go. It's a disgrace how little care you men take. I know. I know. You've got to be miles away from here before dawn. I will look forward to our next meeting, Colonel Custer. I can hardly wait myself. I do not need your help. Mount the detail, Sergeant. Detail, mount up! You can make Cedar Springs before daybreak. Should be safe to camp there for the rest of the night, and then move on to Fort Riley. Yes, sir. The gates are open, Sergeant. Move them out. Yes, sir. I don't mind saying that that's a load off my mind. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Sorry about the bumps, ladies. This here is Cedar Springs. And we made it without losing our hair. <laughs> Begging your pardon, ma'am. All right, we'll make camp here. McGee, you take first watch. Keep a good look out at our back. We don't want any unwanted guests. We'll be here about three hours. We'll leave right after sunup. Here's some blankets. Thank you, Sergeant Busted. My pleasure, ma'am. I'll get some water. about Colonel Custer. I detest the man and everything he stands for. You don't mean that. Tell me, Anna. Have you ever thought about remarrying? I haven't even the time to think about it. Then take time before it's too late. You shut out everything that makes life worth living for a woman. A home, a man, children. I have my work. Nothing else matters. Not now, perhaps. But the years have a strange way of passing you by. And regrets aren't much consolation as you grow older.
Corporal of the Guard. Post number one, trooper coming in on foot. All right. What happened? They hit us at night, sir. Hard. If we didn't have a chance. Did they kill the women? They're as good as dead, sir. The Cheyenne loaded them into the Surrey and drove off with them. I play dead. It's all I could do. Better get over to the hospital and have the surgeon take a look at that wound. Sir, about the women. We'll get them back, Sergeant. Colonel, I'll be ready to ride any time you say. Get them over to the hospital. Corporal of the Guard! Post number one, engine coming in. man doesn't return to his camp. It's the last we'll ever see of those two women they've captured. Is Tall Knife a squaw that he makes war on women? Tall Knife does not want the women. You, you come alone and they go free. You stay here and they die. General, do we saddle up? No, we don't. Not one man leaves this fort, and that's an order. Request the general's permission to be excused from duty, sir. If anything happens to those women... What's that? How'd you say? There's a personal matter I have to attend to, sir. Between you and Tall Knife, I suppose? Yes, sir. I can't permit any foolhardy acts of gallant. General Terry, you heard that Indian. If I don't go, Tall Knife will kill those two women. But even if I allowed you to go, what guarantee would we have that Tall Knife would free them? No. I can allow you to make no move until I order it. Is that clear? I made a mistake in coming here. But, sir, I thought with your own sister in Tall Knife's hands. That's enough, Custer. General Terry, do you realize that... That's all. You'll confine yourself to quarters until further notice. Now get out of here. that you might have a little trouble sneaking out a horse, sir. So there's one saddle and waiting just 50 yards from the main gate. What makes you think I need a horse? You know I'm confined to quarters. Never figured you'd let a little detail like that stand in your road. And there's a ladder leading against the north wall so you don't have to use the gate. The sentries might not understand and start yelling for the corporal of the guard. <laughs> When I get back, Sergeant, I'm going to have you court-martialed for helping an officer break his confinement to quarters. Yes, sir.
came alone. Will you keep your word and release the women? We will hunt together, Yellow Hair. Death Hunt. You will take the women with you. If you live, they live. And you lied. Your word has no honor. Speak softly, Yellow Hair. <laughs> You and the women will die now. We'll hunt your hunt, Tall Knife. And make it one you'll never forget. At sunrise tomorrow, you will be set free to run. Put him with the women. You came here alone and unarmed? Why didn't you bring the regiment? You'd be dead right now if I brought them. You better get what sleep you can. You're gonna need all your strength in a few hours. <laughs> the great hunters of the plains. Their whole history is based on the hunt. They hunt for food, and they hunt for sport. Sometimes when a captive is taken, they often let him go, to get away if he can. You mean they hunt down a man as they would an animal? That's correct. I refuse to run to be chased. Well, that's your decision to make. But I think you'll run. If you have any idea what the Cheyenne do to their female captives. I don't want to hear any more. We'll both go with you, Colonel. Take that with you. When the sun is there, I will come after you. Let's go. Down this slope, hurry. Ridiculous. 
still. Don't spot any rippling in the water. Want them to catch you? I can't swim. My mistake. Scalps. We've got to keep moving. I told you to keep going. Not without you. What are you going to do? Try to even the odds a little if I can. Now keep moving. Up here. They can't ride up on these rocks.
Now the hunt will end yellow hair. Black Eagle was killed by accident, Tall Knife. There's no reason for us to fight. Stop now, before it's too late. No. no more. You have proved the truth of your words about Black Eagle, the warrior's way. And it will be as it was before. There will be peace between us. There will be peace between us. You can rest over here. It's a long, uneventful walk back to Fort Hayes. Good evening, sir. I didn't send for you. I did, General Terry. You did? May I ask why you feel privileged to summon one of my officers to your beck and call? Or you may be General Grant's niece, but by the great horned toad, don't you think... Yes, what is it, Melinda? Um, may I see you for just a minute, please? Yes, of course you can see me. I'm standing right here in front of you. Why... Alone. Alone? Now, why should you want to see me? General Terry. Huh. Yeah. Well, I don't know what that was. Oh. May I say, Mrs. Peverly, that you look lovely. Thank you. This is Melinda's dress. It's been so long since I... The reason I wanted to see you, Colonel Custer, is that I feel I owe you an apology. My opinion of you is... It's an opinion shared by many people. I was wrong about you, too. In what way? Despite all you went through, you showed no sign of weakness, and I admire that in anyone, male or female. Thank you. But my apology still stands. For the first time, I think I understand you a little. But I'd like to know more. What you think and what you are inside. I'm a soldier, Mrs. Beverly. No more, no less. What I do think is that this country must have a chance to grow and become great. And to do that, a price must be paid. But is it worth such a terrible price? It is to me. 